it's anything other than the Earth is flat. Okay, so as to the design of the test, I'd like you to take a look at this beach ball, which is obviously spherical, as the Earth is claimed to be. So we're going to zoom in on a section of the beach ball, and imagine you have three objects affixed to the surface that are all the same height and in a row. So in this case, I use toothpaste caps because we're all familiar with those. The regular line that connects the tops of those caps will also connect the bases and give you a very accurate representation of the shape of the object they're attached to, which in this case is the beach ball. So get rid of the line and the caps and we're gonna zoom back out and get rid of the beach ball in its place we have the globe. Again, we're going to zoom in on a section of the globe. And same thing, imagine you have three objects that are the same height, all in a row. In this case, I chose mountains, because most mountains all over the world, the elevation has been recorded, and there's lots of sources for that. It's fairly easy to find three mountains in a row that are the same elevation. It took me some time, I think this, because it was the first time I ever did it, trying to locate this was actually pretty difficult and time consuming. Because you need three mountains of equal elevation, or actually you need two. One on either end can be higher and you can actually just go down a little lower from the peak to make the elevation. But it requires certain characteristics. Those three mountains have to be in, in a straight line. Two of them have to be the same elevation, the third one has to be the same or a little bit higher. And the peaks also that you're observing have to be prominent. In other words, they have to raise up above the surrounding landscape. So mountains around those mountains. And they have to be prominent enough to where there aren't any mountains in between them that are taller. So they have to be tall mountains in a row without tall mountains in between them. So it's a little challenging to find this. It does take some research and maybe even going out and doing some observations and scouting around on trails, which is what I did, but it is doable. I think if someone wanted to repeat this at this point, with my help and some tips, it, it could be done fairly easily. And I, I would say that there are hundreds of instances of mountains of similar or the same elevation in a row all over the world. That being said, this is the same as the toothpaste caps. The regular line that connects the tops of those mountains will also connect the bases of those mountains and give you a very accurate representation of the shape of the object they are protruding from, which in this case is the Earth. Okay, get rid of the line and the mountains, and we're gonna zoom back out now we're going to look at, instead of a sphere, we're going to look at flat surface. So in this case, it's a ruler. And again, imagine you have three objects that are all the same height attached to the surface. And again, we have the toothpaste caps. And again, the regular line that connects the tops of those caps also connects the bases of those caps and gives you a very accurate representation of the object they're attached to, which in this case is the ruler. And if we get rid of the caps and the ruler, instead we have a flat earth and three mountains that are all the same height, then we have the same phenomenon, that the line that connects the tops of the mountains also connects the bases of the mountains and gives us a very accurate representation of the object they're protruding from, which in this case is the Earth. Okay, so we're going to get rid of the line and the mountains and the flat Earth, and we're going to go back to the globe for a moment here, and if we zoom in once again on our 
section of the globe and we put our three mountains back and for the sake of this demonstration we'll call this mountain number one and we'll call this mountain number two and we'll call this mountain number three. So if you're standing on mountain number one and it's 5400 feet and you're on a globe and mountain number two is 5400 feet and mountain number three is 5400 feet then if you're looking from mountain number one to mountain number two your line of sight is straight but the surface that the mountains are protruding from which is the surface of the earth is curved so your line of sight is straight but the surface of the earth is curved and so therefore you would never see mountain number three because the curvature introduces declination visible declination of mountain three and it's going to drop down particularly if this distance right here between mountain number two and mountain number three is vast 30 40 50 miles then you're looking at many hundreds and even thousands of feet of declination which is visible sinkage of the mountain so it's literally sinking out of view from your horizontal line of sight over the top of the two mountains okay that makes sense so we're going to get rid of the line of sight and the mountains and we're going to zoom out again and get rid of the globe and Let's go back to our flat earth and our three mountains on the flat earth. So if we call this mountain number one and this is mountain number two and this is mountain number three. If you're standing on mountain number one and looking across to mountain number two, then mountain number three should be either just barely visible or just barely obscured behind mountain number two. And if you're somehow able to move perpendicular to the line created by the alignment of the three mountains, say 100 or 200 feet, and then look across to mountain number two, and these peaks are all prominent, in other words, they're standing individually with nothing obscuring the side of them, then if you can move one or 200 feet off to one side, when you look across past mountain number two, you would see mountain number three. And then of course that's on a flat earth. So your line of sight would be right at mountain number three. So that's the basic premise of the test. Find three mountains in a row, two of them of similar or identical height. One of them can be slightly higher, but put myself at the same exact elevation of the other two and look across and record the observation and see is mountain number three visible or is mountain number three not visible because the earth is curved and it has visually declined by a significant distance that's the test part of my quest in trying to put this test together was not only to find three mountains that were the same elevation in a row but also three mountains that were well known and well photographed so that anyone watching this video could validate for themselves that indeed I was actually recording the mountains that I claimed I was recording. So one of the mountains is Tennant Mountain, which isn't actually in the video, but is where the camera was placed to capture the shot. And actually I was on a ridge down in front of Tennant Mountain. And the foreground mountains, and in particular Frying Pan Mountain, is a really recognizable mountain it's got a forest service tower on top of it and two communications antennas. Also included in the shot, but not really part of the test, is number four here, as you can see, Mount Pisgah. And Mount Pisgah also has a tower on the top of it, and it's a really popular spot for hikers, just like Frying Pan Mountain is. Both of the mountains are very well photographed and well known, so it's going to be real easy for anyone to validate that the mountains I claim are in the video are the actual mountains in the video. As for the mountain in the background of the shot, Greybeard Mountain, there aren't quite as many pictures of it on the internet, but they can be found. And Greybeard Mountain is part of the Black Mountain Range, which rises up out of Black Mountain, North Carolina. There's really only maybe nine or ten prominent peaks on the entire Black Mountain Range. So with a little bit of work, it's fairly easy to confirm that 
the mountain I'm claiming is Greybeard Mountain is indeed Greybeard Mountain. Okay, and to do a little more validation here of my data, I have Google Maps. As you can see, there's Tenant Mountain listed. I was actually a little less than half a mile in front of Tenant Mountain. Not really at the peak, but down in front of it. And you can see that the distance from Tenant Mountain to Greybeard Mountain, not the trailhead, this is the only thing they list is the trailhead. The mountain is actually right there, so it's a little bit further. They don't list the mountain for some reason, but you can see the distance is 40.43 miles, and I was about 0.43 miles in front of Tenant Mountain. So it's roughly 40 miles from my location with the camera to the peak of Greybeard Mountain. And then, of course, I'm looking past Frying Pan Mountain, which is somewhere in here. And I have a map for that as well. This is Frying Pan Mountain. See up here. Frying Pan Mountain to Greybeard Trail. Again, it's to the mountain. So this is Frying Pan Mountain. So Tenant Mountain was back here where the camera is and from Tenant Mountain to Frying Pan Mountain is about six miles. Then you can see the distance from Frying Pan Mountain to Greybeard Mountain is 33.79 miles and I just went with 34 miles. Okay and with regard to locating images of the mountains that I used you can see here here's a search for Frying Pan Mountain there are lots of images of the tower and from the tower. So there's not a ton of long-range shots of the tower like the one in my video, but they're out there. Here's one here. Mount Pisgah, on the other hand, there are tons of images of Mount Pisgah from a distance where you can see the antenna and the whole mountain. That's easy to validate. There's another one. And Greybeard Mountain it's kind of similar to Frying Pan Mountain in that people like to hike up to Greybeard and take photographs from it. So you don't see a lot of photographs of it so much. It's, it's kind of like a bald or mostly a bald. It used to be completely bald. It's got maybe waist high shrubs on the summit now. And some of the images of Greybeard are from the wrong angle. So they don't look the same as the angle that I recorded. But I do have a, one really good source here. There's a website called masterviews.net and a guy named Ken Gager who took a bunch of photographs of mountains from the overlooks all the way along the Blue Ridge Parkway. And he identified hundreds of mountain peaks in the distance. So this is a really good source. Actually, this image is very similar to the image that I collected. If we zoom in here, he actually shot this from Graveyard Fields, which is about a mile from where I was, maybe three quarters of a mile. And you can see that the image, when you see what I'll show you a little bit later on, you'll see that it's very similar, actually. He identifies Graybeard Mountain right here at 40 miles distance, which is the same distance I claim that it is from where I am. Of course, it's three quarters of a mile from me, but I'm kind of lateral to his position, so I'm not closer to Greybeard, I'm just off to the side. And then there's Pinnacle, which is 42 miles away, and then these are most of the prominent peaks of the Black Mountain Range. So he's a good neutral source for photography of these mountains, because he has nothing to do with any sort of research of the shape of the earth. And you can see here's Frying Pan Mountain, that means I'm off down behind this ridge here, which is Graveyard Ridge, off to the side. I'm looking past Frying Pan Mountain at Graveyard Mountain. You'll see that this looks very similar to the video I recorded, the evidence that I'll be sharing with you shortly. So that's some evidence for Graveyard Mountain. If you need to validate that what I'm showing you is Graveyard Mountain, then it definitely can be done. The Black Mountain Range is very identifiable. Like I said, there's probably only about 10 prominent peaks. And that would include all of the ones he lists here. So there's Greybeard, Pinnacle, Potato Knob, Klingman's Peak, Mount Gibbs, Mount Mitchell, which is a great place to hike, Mount Craig, which is another great place to hike, 
All of these are the most prominent peaks, I would say, of the Black Mountain Range, which rises up out of Black Mountain, North Carolina. Okay, so here's another graphic that I did, which is, it's actually 44 inches long, every inch equals a mile, and I have all three of the mountains included in this image. So I have Tenant Mountain, where I was located out in front of, and then Frying Pan Mountain, and Greybeard Mountain. So you can see that there's a large distance between Greybeard Mountain and Frying Pan, and then a much shorter distance between Tenant and Frying Pan. The green band along the bottom of the image is actually the surface of the earth and the curvature that I put in there, it's not really noticeable too much if you look at it, but it is actually accurate according to the mainstream curvature formula. So it's 44 miles and there's 1290 feet of declination from the left side of the image to the right side of the image. It curves down ever so slightly. It's not very noticeable, but it does. Now what we're going to do is zoom in on a section of this. Here's Tenant Mountain. The camera was located out in front of it and down below the peak as it is taller than Greybeard frying pan. And I put myself at 5,400 feet with the camera. Actually, the altimeter, which I verified continually along the hike with topographic maps, was giving me a reading of 5,380 feet, which is really more my target height. I wanted to err on the low side. As you can see here, Frying Pan Mountain is 5,360 feet. It actually varies depending on where you go from 5,340 to 5,360, maybe even 5,370. But it does have 40 to 50 foot trees on the summit, and I had to take those into account because it's a visual observation. So the mountain looks to be, let's say it's 5,350, and it has 40 foot tall trees, so it's 5,390 uh, with the trees on the top and I'll show you some images of those. So it was roughly the same as where I was. Like I said, I was at 5380, and frying pan is maybe 5390, 5380. So close to being accurate that I just went ahead and went with it. And as you can see here, there's six miles of distance between Tenant Mountain and Frying Pan Mountain. And here's the curved surface of the earth, which does curve downward throughout the entire image, whereas the horizontal plane line of sight is flat. You can see there's six miles between Tenant Mountain and Frying Pan Mountain and then as we move along the red horizontal plane stays level and the surface of the earth is curving down. It's declining and the distance is 34 miles between Frying Pan Mountain and Greybeard Mountain. So in Greybeard Mountain Again, you get different elevation readings, anywhere from 5370 to 5410. I assumed it's about 5390, roughly. And it has maybe five foot tall little shrubs on it. So it's gonna appear to be 5390, 5395. It's, it's gonna be visually appear very, very close to the same elevation as Frying Pan Mountain. And then I've got a little bit of graphic in here it just shows the declination we should have. You can see that, uh, well, I'll just read this. The standard earth curvature formula stipulates 770 feet of declination over 34 miles, and I will verify this shortly. This means Greybeard Mountain should visually sink to 4,630 feet. That would be 5,400 minus 770. It should not be visible from the camera position. Also notice that the scale is very accurate as 7 times 770 equals 5390, which is very close to the actual height of Greybeard Mountain. So in other words, the horizontal line of sight established from the camera position over the top of Frying Pan Mountain would be right here, and the 770 foot of decline is how far Greybeard Mountain should sink down out of view. So you shouldn't be able to see it looking across on a straight line, it should be down out of view by 770 feet, which is a substantial distance. And here are some of the elevation numbers for the mountains in the test. So I'm going to use summitpost.org, which shows Greybeard Mountain at 5408. I've seen it at 5375, 5385. I kind of figure it's right around 5400 feet, maybe 5395. 
and visually it's not going to appear much taller than that because here's what the top looks like. So these are very low shrubs, maybe three, four feet tall. So you can walk around up on the top of Greybeard Mountain and you're just going to have a clear view, 360 degrees. So they add maybe five feet onto the top, visually speaking. So Frying Pan Mountain here on summitpost.org is 5340. And again, I've seen it from 5320, maybe 5330, all the way up to 5370. So I take 5340 or 5350 as an average. And there are large trees. So this is the trail going up to the summit. And this is not far below the summit at all. The trail is actually quite short. And it looks like this the whole way up to the top and over all the way to the tower. And then here's a shot of the tower. You can see the trees all around it. I estimate those trees to probably be 40 feet tall. So if, uh, if it's 5340 or 5350 and you have 40 foot tall trees, then you end up with, visually it's going to appear about the same as Graveyard Mountain and about the same as my camera position. And to verify the 770 foot number that I referenced, I'm going to use some mainstream sources for earth curvature. This is DizHub, as you can see. It's a heavily used earth curvature calculator by flat earthers and others as well. We're going to put in our numbers here. Our eye height is the height that we are above what we are observing. And that's going to be zero because the test that I designed incorporates three equal heights. So that'll be zero. It would be the same as if your camera was exactly at sea level and you were recording straight out across the water. So your camera is level or zero feet above what is being observed, which is the ocean in that case. And the same would be true for a camera at 10 feet above sea level. Imagine you're filming objects floating in the water that are 10 feet tall. Well, the camera would be zero feet above the tops of the floating objects. So the eye height here would be zero. And our target distance is 34 miles. If I calculate that, we get 770 feet, which is exactly the amount of declination I said we would have. And here I have another Earth curvature calculator. Just to verify this, I put in 34 miles as the distance, and the height of the observer above what is being viewed again is zero. And I calculate the hidden amount, which is the same as saying 